All right, guys, thanks for jumping on another episode of Close and Conquer. Got my buddy Eric Bosworth. How are you doing, Eric? Doing well. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing freaking amazing, but I'm always doing amazing. And if not, <laughs> I wouldn't tell you I wasn't doing amazing. So that's the other. If I don't tell you I'm not doing amazing, eventually I say I'm doing amazing. I'll believe it no matter what's happened in my life. 100%. So, all right, well, it's, we're going to jump into it because he, here in Close and Conquer, Eric, we're really on this massive mission. Like when I got in the life insurance business, I got into it because I loved the business. I loved protecting people, liked real estate. Liked waste management, liked construction, freaking love life insurance. And then when I started to start doing some of the stuff online, I'm like, you know what, dude? I know how to sell a ton. I know how to teach people to sell a ton. I know how to teach them to close. We do the whole punch me in the face thing. We love that. We're like, we're going to really hammer every week and empower people to close themselves, conquer themselves, close whatever they're, whatever they're trying to close in the world. But I think of and, and conquer whatever they want to conquer, their fears, issues, whatever they are going on. But I'd love it, Eric, if you could share, because it's important to know where people are at. Like you give some people the opportunity to share, and sometimes they share a little bit, which is fine. I tend to share as much as I can. I don't give a shit. Like I'm kind of, <laughs> I am where I am. But let everybody know, doesn't know who you are, a little bit about you so we can get to some of the stuff we need to attack today. So again, my name is Eric Bosworth. I'm from a small city uh, named Haines City, Florida, right in the center of uh, Florida. It's you know, about 30 minutes from Walt Disney World. Um, grew up, you know, regular middle class family up until I was about 10, 11 years old. Parents got divorced, um, you know, went downhill very quickly from there uh, only because shortly after they got divorced, I found out my dad wasn't my real father. So that kind of played a huge role in my dad, who I thought was my real dad, wow. stepping back, my mother getting into drugs. Like, I'm an open book. People know mm -hmm. I've put videos on my Instagram. Um, so, you know, all through high school, I kind of put myself through high school because mm -hmm. my mother had ended up going to jail for drugs. My dad didn't want anything to do with me. My sisters were. <laughs> so once your dad found out you weren't his kid. Yeah, he kind of just like, pulled I'm back. Good. Yeah, it was which I think he always knew. But once he once he found out, I knew it was a different it was a different story. Yeah. So that happened for a few years, put myself through high school because I knew at the end of the day, it was important. Like I never had any role models. I had people yeah. I didn't want to be like, you know, so I just, you know, just made sure I made the right moves, um, you know, to to do what I wanted to do in life. So put myself through high school, sold bootleg Air Forces, Coogee shirts, Ed Hardy, all those different brands back in the day, just just so I can make a living and live with some friends of mine. Um, thank God I had good friends back then that allowed me to, you know, into their homes and their parents allowed me to live there. And uh, after high school, we, we got really good at selling, you know, the clothing thing. And I was also cutting hair all through high school to put up, uh, to put myself through. And we ended up opening up a clothing store in a barbershop. And mm -hmm. it was cool because that's what truly taught me business because we started it right after the recession. I mean, this was 2008, 2009 when I graduated high school and we did that. And, you know, we did amazing for about a year because if we didn't hit our quota at the store, we, I would put all the shoes and shirts and everything in my trunk and go to all the grocery stores or Jiffy stores and wait mm -hmm. for people to come out and say, hey, you want to buy some forces? That's mm -hmm. what I did to make sure yeah. I hit quota for the store to keep the store going, paying the rent, et cetera. Um, but when I when I was about 20 years old, after about two years of running the store uh, in, the, in the, the clothing store in the barbershop, I had a kid with a girl. Mm -hmm. Found out when he was a year old, wasn't my son. Wait a minute. So, wait a minute. Yeah. Baby's born, yeah. Baby's and you're born. like, "This is my kid." That's like, my I'm son. excited. Yeah. Everybody, I got a, I got uh -huh. a boy. A year into it, she says, "What?" She says, "Well, it's not her. It's not her. Her and I ended up splitting up." Okay. And then I seen her best friend yeah. uh, at a club one night, and her best friend was trying to come on to me. Yeah. And I wasn't really having it. I'm like, "Nah," because she, you know, she acted real crazy whenever yeah. we were all around. I'm like, "You're definitely crazier than my ex." So yeah. I'm not having that. She's like, "Well, by the way, your son's not yours." Like. First time I ever heard it, like that was and my you son. you never thought that. Never thought never. that. Never thought that. Here's why. She ended up cheating on me with a guy who looked like me in high school because he was my friend. And we kind of were. Dude, we this is like similar. a great book. Listen, you, <laughs> as soon as you came in here, you said you're transparent as hell. I'm Dude, I want you to be transparent. Hell. I'm just saying so this is a great people, story. People need to understand this story. There's a lot more to that story. I mean, okay. there's ins and outs of everything. But for an entire year. Mm hmm I got a son. I got a son. And I took care up, of him. And, you... and that was my baby boy. Like, I taught him how to feed himself, like, sitting there. I changed him. So what I... happened from that moment? So when that happened and everybody found out, it blew up. Like, the real father called me, threatened me. I said, Wait a minute. He knew he was real bad. He knew. He knew. Oh, she knew. Shit. Everybody knew. And he was in the military. So I think he was trying to keep it under wraps because, of course, when you're in the military, government's yeah. going to come after you for child support, do all right. this. So I think they were all playing this on me. So I could continue supporting you're financially providing. Exactly. Like, they're like, let them do it. Exactly. Exactly. So 
when all of it blew up, she ended up taking them away from me. So I had to basically cut my son off. So I went through a little bit of depression, lost uh, my clothing store, lost my barber shop, like lost everything. Did so you I, ever confirm like it wasn't your kid? Or you oh, didn't yeah. Have, no, okay, I, so you oh, went to the went test. I got a DNA test and everything. 99.9%. Really? I it was not the father. Not the father. <laughs> yeah. So it was some real Mari shit. Like, yeah. I mean, if it, definitely I could have been on a TV show yeah. with it. And it gets even worse. And I know... This is going off the beaten path a little bit, but over the next four years, I thought she got my name off the birth certificate. She never did. So she's a low life, had to end up getting like government food stamps or something like that. So as soon as she started getting that, the government came after me. I'm like, why are you coming after me? I already proved that the son, my son wasn't my son. They were like, that doesn't matter. In the state of Florida, when you sign the birth certificate, you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you did not know. I had to bring her parents in and her friends as witness to testify saying I did not know. Wow. It took me four years. I went bankrupt. I bought three properties. I was doing well. I was flipping real estate. I lost everything again for the second time, getting my name off the birth certificate, wow. paying my lawyer almost $100,000 because I lost the first time. We had to take it to the appellate court. We had to take the judge to the appellate court just to win because there was a few discrepancies that my lawyer finally found um, with them sending me paperwork, et cetera. And then I finally got my name off the birth certificate. But that entire time I was paying $1,300 a month in child support for four years yeah. on a kid that wasn't mine. So that's, that, you know, when you're talking about, that's you know, a story. Let, let's get to know that, you a little bit. I love it. This is but, the reason why I'm so resilient, you know? All right. But hear this, one, right? Yeah. Like, and by the way, I didn't know you. Okay. So he he's in the business. Yeah. And I asked him the other day, like, what did you what did you think about me? And he he was not he's like, Well, you know, basically, what did you say? What was your answer? Before you knew me. Before I knew you? Yeah. Well, I just thought you were you were a strong minded asshole. I mean, okay, strong minded asshole. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> like, I don't know. But we but on a serious note, Eric, when you sat down and talked to yeah. me about a lot of this story. It was transparent. Mm -hmm. um, you were telling the truth. Some of it's hard to share, but you're going to share it. It anyway. was at first. Now yeah. I believe that it, it's. You but know, even even if it's not hard for you personally, it's just for most people, you don't get that much transparency. Mm -hmm. I think it's very therapeutic. By the way, I think sharing my shit is therapeutic. That it works. What I found. Uh, me too. Like I think it's been very good for me. But also when you're when you're in business or you're in sales or you're in anything, if I know you, I trust you more. Because, hell, if you're going to tell me the good and the bad, because give me a guy that tells me all the good, congratulations, bro. You kicked ass and you're good. But give me a guy or girl that tells me the good and the bad. Like, yeah, these things have gone good, but damn, these things went really bad for me. And they weren't they, they weren't good. And you were, will, you were willing to share that. So I appreciate that very much about Absolutely. you. And also, learn this when you're in business. You develop your own opinions of people. Too many of, of you or too many people are weak-minded. And somebody says, this guy's this and this and this. You know what I think? I'm going to go find out. What most people do is go, yeah, he's like that. And I go, how do you know that? Like, I always love that. I took out the guy there. He's like, well, I don't like working with that guy. I'm like, well, what do you not like about it? Boom, boom, boom. I go, how do you know those things? Well, I, I go, no, how do you know him? Not somebody told you. How do you know him? And he doesn't. Somebody else told him something and altered his opinion. All right, so I'm going to give you some, some numbers here. So you went from doing everything you could to make money. When did you get in the insurance business? Got in the insurance business December of 2020, a day okay. after open enrollment started. So the got worst it. time to get into the business because got I got it. into the health insurance business got it. first with a captive agency. Got it. So got mm -hmm. into health. Did that for how long? I did that for exactly one year, one month. Got it. So is this so in 2022, you're working with us. But That's very, when I went to the FFL conference. Correct. But very yeah. much like just getting rolling, doing what you're doing before. Mm -hmm. And how much did your team do for that year? Issue so paid. In 2022, yeah. we did, I believe it was 2.5 million okay. total in yep. issued paid business yep. for uh life insurance. Because we were still mainly Correct. focused on health. 100 percent Yep. But in life, you still, but but hear me, I like still very much doing health by accident, did 2.5 million. We were just cross-selling from health. Fair enough. Yep. What did y'all do in 23? 19 million. 19 million. So to to start to to really start thinking about this, guys. I think it's really important as you're as you're thinking about your business and you're thinking about and also hearing what Eric's what Eric's talking about. Because at the end of the day, you know, I don't care what your story is. If you have the greatest life ever, great. The work, dude. It all it it don't matter. It's where you go from there, right? He's not more qualified, or I'm not more qualified because shit was fucked up, and you're not more qualified because it was great. Like we're all equally qualified, which is what's amazing, right? It's a matter of what you go ahead and do with it. What did you do mindset-wise? You never built a business doing that kind of volume. Never. 
from a mindset standpoint, I know you're working hard. Totally get that. You're you're knocking down the door. You're kicking ass. I get it. You're, you're breathing life into people. But for you, for Eric Bosworth, for from a mental standpoint, when did you realize, like, dude, this is getting really big? Like, when did it hit you in 23, whether it's in the 22? When did it hit you that, damn, this is becoming a legit big business? Because that's a big business. Yeah. Anywhere in America, that's a big mother effing business. Yeah, and this year, you know, we're looking to do 50. Oh, I know, we, and I we believe you will. will. Uh, but I'll tell you, I think specifically when it really hit me, well, there was two times that it hit me. Um, December, I'm, I'm sorry, November of 2022, okay? Um, went through a really bad breakup, got cheated on. Uh, I was Another on one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was probably, honestly, hey, honestly, I, it, Sean, yeah. full transparency was probably my fault. Got I it. treated her like shit. Got it. Um, the business came first. Got it. I Understood. Just, I'm just yeah. trying to keep the story straight. So, so probably yeah. my fault. So yeah. November 2022, that happened. Um, I was $168,000 in debt. I was calling my oh. partner, Ian, who's been with me since day one, loyal to the cause. Your buddy. Yeah, exactly. Your boy. He's exactly. Great. He's great. Yep. Yep. He's moved everywhere. I've told him to move he's, just like he's that. He's stuff. done everything we need. And he runs our Orlando location. But November, when that happened, um, I was devastated. You know, I was devastated because I was betrayed, not because that was the one for me. I knew we were supposed to be broken up, yeah. but that's what hurt. happened. Yeah, I was yeah. hurt. Now, $168,000 in debt because I was trying to create a lead company where we had exclusive branded leads where our agents could trust the name, the credibility, the exposure and everything of that nature. And I had the idea in mind, but it just wasn't hitting. Facebook wasn't hitting. We kept on getting different audiences. Like it was rough. So um, I, I called Ian one night. I said, hey man, you know, I'm, I'm on the floor. Like I just got cheated on. It's we're, we're in open enrollment. I'm losing out on the best month and a half of my life right now. We're about three weeks away from me not having any money left to keep this going. You know, thank God for, for Golden Platinum Amex for, for that long. But And I built this business off credit. So if yeah. you're scared to build this off credit, don't be, because Amen. I did. So I did that. I said, we're about three weeks away. And Ian's like, man, you really just need to get away. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe you're right. So I flew to Europe for the first time in my life, Paris, Paris, France, went out there by myself. Okay, wait a minute. So I want to hear this. So you're in a really bad spot. Really, in a really bad Don't spot. Don't really, can't see the light in the tunnel, mm -hmm. but know that it's about to get really bad. Yes. And really your bad. boy says, hey, what you need to do is get away. Yeah. I almost cried to him. I was in my bed yeah. at night. It was 11 o'clock so at night. you get an airplane, fly to Europe. I fly to Europe there by myself. I knew a couple people out there. Great people met them there. Um, I'm walking around, you know, I'm doing some shopping and I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at the Dior and the Louis Vuitton store. I'm like, damn, I know I shouldn't go in there because of how far mm -hmm. we're in debt and everything. But you know what? I'm just going to go in and, and, and just look around and just make myself feel better. I just want to make myself feel better because it was just so much that happened at one time. And you know, when things come crashing down, they all do it at once. Yeah. While I was walking to the Louis Vuitton store, my phone started going crazy. Telegram. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm looking at it. I'm calling Ian. I'm calling my guys. I'm like, guys, what is going on? Ian and Adrian mainly, they're like, Eric, the leads are blowing up. We're just, we're closing deal after deal after deal. I look on my Facebook and one of our ads got 3.4 million views in wow. 24 hours. That changed my life. That one ad changed my life for good. And I spent almost a million dollars until that ad off of personal production, Sean. That's why personal production is so important. Correct. I was writing seven to 10,000 a week in life insurance, another 50,000 a week in health insurance and personal production, just to fund building the lead company. A lot of people spend 10, 20, 30, 40,000. I spent 760,000 to be exact before mm -hmm. my first ad hit. Yeah. So I was all in, I was all in because I had this crazy idea that actually worked, but that one ad, that overnight success was the 10,000 hours and, 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 and countless of, of invested dollars I put in prior. But that's what happened while I was in Paris walking to the Louis Vuitton store. And they're like, Eric, it's going crazy. The quality where they, they know who you are. Oh, we want to talk to the bald guy with the, with the veins coming out of his neck. Or that's what they call me, the strong guy, the mm -hmm. tatted guy, because I did it differently. You know, everybody else in the insurance industry suited up, speaking too proper to, you know, their mannerisms are just so consistent with each other. So mm -hmm. I wanted to come in and not recreate the wheel, but shuffle things up a little bit. Amen. And, and when that happened, it opened up my eyes. That was the first time that I knew, okay, this business, this is it. This is how I build. And I'm not just going to live off that one ad. I'm going to put more content out. I'm going to mm -hmm. put more uh, reels out, more ads, more everything, bring in new agents, bring in new faces, whatever I have to do. So since that, since then, I've invested over a quarter million dollars just into marketing and content alone, not ad spend. Correct. Alone. So it takes money to make money. But since then, we've been able to build off of that. And the second time that it hit me that it was getting actually too big for me was this past July. I lost two of my top guys that were with me from the beginning. I was helping paying their rents. 
I was, you know, helping you giving them deals so they could get their wheels off the ground when I first started this business. And them and their downlines felt, okay, well, we got money now. We don't need Eric anymore. You know, people are only loyal to their need of I hear you, bro. Of course. And I'm an asshole. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to push you to be great. And if you are not being great around me, I don't want you around me. I need that separation mm -hmm. because you'll drag me down with you. And I just would push them. I, I call it shaking the tree. You know, I do that mm -hmm. every three or four months. I got to shake the tree. And some people don't last. So they, they, they left and they left in the worst way possible, you know, tried to take other agents from me, you know, all that, all that yep. nasty stuff people do on the back end. And I'm just like, wow, it hit me, which hurt me again. I was in a low spot. I'm like, what is going on? What did I do wrong? And I, you know, I always blame mm -hmm. myself whether I'm right or wrong in a situation. I learned from it. So mm -hmm. I always think, what could I have done differently? But exactly one month later, that was the month that we did 1.1 million in, in, in issue paid business last July. One month later, Sean, we did $2 million, a $900,000 mm -hmm. increase yeah. in issue paid business after losing those 22 agents. Correct. We had gained 80 Correct. within 30 days. So it was kind of like a, a, a sign that it was the cancer being weeded out, Correct. Which, which allowed us to grow and, and, and sprout new branches, new leaves, et cetera. So that was the second time I'm like, oh, shit, like we can really do this no matter what. It doesn't matter who we lose. It doesn't matter what happens. The business and the show must go on. And that right. changed the way I looked at everything because I said, okay, we're, we're hitting these, these peaks and valleys, but every single time our valleys are getting a little bit higher and our peaks are getting higher. So in that sense, there were two times. All right. So a bunch of things you said that are huge. N number one, you know, I, was on a, I was doing a podcast the other day that I was doing in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. and I was interviewing this guy, Evan Carmichael. He's got 3.5 <clears throat> million subscribers on YouTube. Okay. And he sent me, they, when they, when these, a lot of these guys that are bigger on, and they send you a one sheet, just a one sheet of their deal. And his one sheet was great. 19 did this, but, but he, he snapshotted the subscribers first year, 25 by the end of the, like next year, 97, 3000. And it was, it was a grind, right? His overnight success <clears throat> was four or five, six years. till it just popped. And I said to him, like, what did you do? And he, you know, he, he was doing something different too, but he was like, yeah. I was just chat. I, was, I just was not going to let up. And it was a really, really hard grind. Most entrepreneurs, if they have success day one, everybody would be doing this. Like, like if, if you went in day one, day 40, day 382, and everybody had success, you'd be like, there'd be, everybody would be doing it. If it was him, buddy, my said, if it was easy kid, everybody would do it. You know, and it's just, <laughs> it's hard being a businessman, a businesswoman. And the amount of money you put into it, the amount of effort you put into it, and then that roller coaster. Like you're walking through the store, you're on the bottom of the world, and then all of a sudden, Telegram is You can't up. dodge it. You, you can't no, dodge it. You're just like, you're going to, and it's going to go, it's going to happen, and, and no matter what you do. And I think, you know, talk about shaking the tree because that also goes for the people you hang out with personally. Because for me, when we launched the insurance deal, dude, I lost 40% of the company the first year and a half, but honestly, I didn't want that 40% of the company here. Like every single thing we did, it was like, we should do it differently. We should do it differently. I was like, dude, I'm just exhausted by it. And they left, same deal. We boom, and then exploded. Went from running about 11 million a year to now we do 750 million paid business. So <laughs> like entirely big, different ball game. Entirely different ball I'm glad game. to contribute to that though. Oh, you <clears throat> contribute quite a bit. And I can't wait to see y'all doing fit. And I say to people too, one day you'll do that amount of volume. One day your deal will do that amount of volume. Um, all right, so when you're, you're, you, you do actually care about people quite a bit. In my opinion, I think you you probably do too much for people in watching. I think that that not that you can't be an ask. Some people aren't, I guess, but you can be. I can be one. But I think there's times you pour a lot into people, and not a lot into people. Um, I think you trust two people. Um, how have you learned to balance that? Because that's you know when we started the company, people would say to me, "You know what's great about you?" I'm like, "What?" They're like, "You trust literally nobody." And then I trust everybody so we can meet in the middle. So they bring me something like, what do you think? I'm like, I don't know. You trust me? I'm like, no. How did you learn how to balance that for you? <laughs> so I actually haven't fully learned yet. Okay. I, I'm still making mistakes Appreciate till this honesty. day. Uh, I just hired a CFO, uh, you know, for my personal and my business finances yeah. that have, that's been able to put a leash on me a little bit. I, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm, a, I'm maniacal in, in the way mm -hmm. I do things f full, you know, full throttle all the time. So I know it's not me that's going to Yeah, he's like that. this all the time. Yeah. It, like, it, you're not high or nothing. No, this is just you. This is fucking natural. Like, no, he's it's, a psycho. It's, it's, it's me. I'm you're like, I have a lot of energy, bro. This is the most, like, this is wacky over here, right? 
Okay, but I'm just, good. I'm just ready to go, good. man. It, it, you have to understand, like, my money's far exceeded my lifestyle already. So mm -hmm. what the fuck is getting me up every day? <laughs> it's to it's to put people in positions to win. Contrary to popular belief of people that are looking at me from the outside, they think I'm some egotistical asshole. No, I like nice shit. Yes, I worked fucking hard for it. Mm -hmm. But I also want my people around me to have really nice shit. Mm -hmm. Everybody always asks me, you know, what's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to sit, have dinner, and play credit card roulette because it doesn't fucking matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who pays for dinner. We all mm -hmm. got it like that. And that's my goal now. So, um, you know, it's just important for people to understand. I, I don't have that balance. So I'm hiring people to put that balance in place for the company. I am not scared to spend more money on administrative assistance. I'm not scared to spend money on a CFO, which I just hired. So you help control yourself. I help control myself through other people that are a lot better at things than I am. For instance, when it comes to my finances, my CFO, he's incredible. But he's the one who found me my, my compound in, in Tampa that you're going to yeah. be at tomorrow. Uh, it cost segregated, saved, saved me hundreds of thousands in taxes, you know, things that I, I didn't even know about that I wouldn't have done if I didn't have him in place. Mm -hmm. um, I am in, currently in the process of hiring a COO. I think it's mm -hmm. that time if we want to hit 50 million this year and we want to hit it the right way where now it's time for me to separate myself. I am too trusting. I am too giving. I have downlines that will call me on some dramatic shit that should have nothing to do with me. It shouldn't even take up headspace. And I mean, at 10, 11 o'clock at night, when I'm about to go to sleep and Sean, you know, as well as I know, you hear something, you think you are responsible for fixing it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I have that problem. So I, I get these things, these text messages, I read them. Now I can't sleep. Now I'm stressing out. I think worst case scenario, et cetera, et cetera. So hiring a COO. Now you don't text me that no more. Mm -hmm. You go to him, mm -hmm. you go to him. And he's because I feel like in my position now, I have to be the positive guy all the time, the positive marketing, the positive content, um, the positive moves being made within the organization, not taking care of everybody's negativity and trauma. And because there's going to be drama, there's going to be negativity. There's going to be peaks and valleys when you're building a business as big as I want to build and that we that we've already built. You, mm -hmm. you, you would agree, correct? 100 percent. So that's the way I'm learning balance is through others, hiring others and then putting me in check because I have to be put in check with the mm -hmm. way my brain works. And that's right. just an honest answer. Well, no. And I think, I think also continue to be a student because most people, when you ask them questions, no matter what it is, that's like, no, I haven't gotten all figured out. Dude, I'm trying to, we're going to do a billion dollars this year. I'm still figuring shit out. And I ain't too proud to admit it. Like I'm, I'm totally <laughs> good. Why? Cause I want to go to 2 billion to 5 billion to 10 billion. I want to do stuff that no, like we've already done stuff. Nobody's ever done in the space. I want to do things that nobody could ever even think about catching up when I'm far gone from here. When they're like, what were those crazy guys doing? Like, how did they do so much volume? I don't care if it's a hundred years from now. Right. When you start talking about when you're trying to help people build their self-image because you took your trauma and your bullshit you put that chip on your shoulder somewhere you hardened up and you attacked mm -hmm. and a lot of people they're in that down place when they come find us right like you had people to reach out to and you were transparent reach out to my buddy talk to him got advice Better than me, I tend to I tend to keep everything inside, not talk to anybody. Lonely. Because remember when I was looking at doing a deal with the company, and uh, a few of the people, the first private equity company I met with said, "Who's the COO?" I said, "Me." They said, "Who's the CEO?" <laughs> and I was like, "I know this is going." Me. Who's the CFO? I said, "Dude, I get it." And they said, "You're too big to not have C level executives. You're going to burn yourself." out like and also you can't be that productive and i had de facto people right like this guy was kind of over but i wasn't really passing everything on to him so i think doing what we did with our merger was huge because it allowed me to do be good at what i'm good at you know um in closing for all the people that why of the people that watch us eric they're you know i got a guy this morning messaged me it's great he's like hey man really love this it helped me out i just launched my gym here's what i was looking to do i need to invest and we just had, like and it was like do good for you like i was afraid to do it but you know what i understand i'll die if i don't like in business i gotta be able, to, be able to invest in my business you've been big on that how do you what is one thing you've done with people because i do believe as crazy as you can be you genuinely and this is true want to see people win what is something that you've done for people like that, that's that been a tool of yours. You're like, you know what, man, when they come in and they're down, here's something I've done to help them believe in themselves. Cause once they believe in themselves, get out of the way, especially if you help them believe in themselves, what is something you've done that you would pass on to other people? So specifically in this industry or uh, in general, wherever. So, so, so in general, um, in general, I try to, I try to get them to change their belief system because what helped me was, I, I hate to say, but it was the monetary values. Uh, you know, I don't hate to say that actually, yeah, because no. I mean, money leads to everything, freedom, you know, as long as you do good with it. So what would happen is I would bring an, I would bring a new agent on. And if I seen they were, they were low, they didn't have any money. We always come up with two different ways they can come on board, you know, free leads or a runner for a, 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 a natural born agent, an agent that's already doing 40, 50, 60,000 a month where they can run deals that them automatically get paid 50% of the deal, um, somewhere of that nature that automatic. So they see that money quicker. 
they see it in their pocket that it starts to change their beliefs. I'm like, oh shit, I just made $1,200 on this one deal. Oh shit, I just made, well, now I made $3,000 this week. And then the next week, oh, well, I just made $5,000. Now their belief system changing. Oh, I'm capable of doing that. I'm capable. Not only that, but, you know, get back to the basics, one-on-ones, sitting down with yeah. them and listening to who they are. Sean, there are so many different personalities that when we bring a new agent on and they're hurting for money because, you know, they did bad money management, bad time management in their previous endeavors or whatever the case may be, we have that runner's course for them uh, where they don't need money to start and they can start seeing that instant success. Uh, we have a lower compensation that, that you provide us where we can bring in the free leads for them. We call it the jumpstart program for the first 30, 60, 90 days where we give them um, where we give them those goals. You know, every time we reach 30 days, we sit them down, we go over everything, see if they want to switch to a higher compensation where they can purchase their own leads at that time. But aside from that specific way we do things, it's weekly one-on-ones. I do weekly one-on-ones with my downlines almost every single week. Now, as of lately, I have gotten away from it due to the new building we were buying, mm-hmm. everything that we dealt with during well, open spend a lot of time hearing them out. Exactly. Learning I do spend are. a lot of time hearing them out because I allow them direct access to me to reach out to mm-hmm. me personally through text message, phone calls, et cetera. So, but when it comes to calculated strategic one-on-ones that we put on our calendar every week, we're getting back to that. Uh, myself, Ian, all of my executives within my organization, because, and we, and we, we don't focus just on, um, SOPs or KPIs on these one-on-ones. Well, we focus on their life. Where are you at? How's your, how's your credit balance? How's your Mm -hmm. business funding? How's your personal life? If they're willing to open up and share so we can sometimes resonate in certain situations like, Oh, we've been there because these newer agents that are coming on board, they see how successful we are now. They don't, they don't remember that just two years ago, I was broke. (laughs) I was broke, almost crying Mm -hmm. to to my business partner, Ian, Hey, this might not work out. So sometimes we have to remind them, Hey, we've been there. We've done that. This didn't just come out of thin air. It might've came in as an overnight success because of all the work we put in, but it didn't come out of thin air. So the more we can resonate, the more we can get them to understand that no matter what background you have, no matter what your personal life is going through right now, might not always be your fault, but it is eventually your problem that you have to solve. And that's important for me to get them to understand because as soon as they understand, Hey, Stop dwelling on the fact that it's not your fault. You know, you messed up, business partner fucked you over, girlfriend cheated on you, whatever the case may be. But eventually it's your problem to solve. Right. And we switch that mindset for them and they start realizing, oh, okay, I can fix this with just a, a good day of selling. I Amen. can fix this with just getting around the other top agents or the agents that are happy-go-lucky because that's what we try to do. We try to pair them with our most consistent agents within each office. That's why I'm a big in-office fan because we can pair them with it, get their mindset in the right, um, well, in the right w- direction. What's amazing about what you just said, a lot of it was, but when you're honest with people about the journey, like so many people get pretty good at something and they just tell you how good they are at it. And it's like, tell me about the fucking time it was like, it was about over. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when we launched, when I lost Fan First Live, I mean, there was a bunch of times I wouldn't admit to it because I was no matter what was happening, but I'm like, no matter what happened, this happened, this legally <laughs> happened, there's over here, this restraint, whatever it was, I was like, Dude. but there were so many times it was like, I don't want to let everybody down. And your transparency is huge. Your your pa- compassion for other people. You're building a massive business. I have no doubt. You. What What's your goal again in 24? This year, 50 million. Just in life insurance. There's you no pay doubt you'll do 50 million. And 7 million with Manhattan Life on our, on our health supplement. And you'll be doing hundreds of millions after that. I really, I, dude, I like being in business with you. I really love your heart. Love who you are. You, you serve people today. Guys, follow Eric Bosworth, Instagram, everywhere else. Check out what he's doing. You can't miss him. Elevated. Go check him out. Compound. If you live near Tampa, you'll know it's loud and proud. There's people everywhere. <laughs> but hey, brother, I really appreciate you getting on. I really do. And thank guys, you so thank much. you for jumping on. Like, subscribe, share. I appreciate you jumping on and spend some time with us on Close and Conquer.